Hello, I'm not too sure at this time of the day how many people I am going to get coming into the channel, but I'm going for it anyway. I'm trying to let people know in advance. So I am just getting myself organised. And if anybody has any questions along the way, feel free to ask. But I would just like to show you that I have received, uh, finally, the colour cottage pigments that I'm going to be using in my resin. So I've just left some out there to remind me to talk about them. Uh, I want to thank um, Monica Barnes Art for mentioning these and showing them in her videos. They are amazing. And this one, I was so jealous, the uh, Copper Penny Shimmer. I'm not too sure if you can see. It just looks like Copper pennies squashed up with sparkles. So I am so looking forward to having a play with all the colours in the pigments. And I've picked out some colours that I think I might be able to use in the ocean. Um, so I might be able to try doing the ocean with pigments as opposed to acrylics. I'm just going to put those out the way and make sure I can see what's happening here. So I am going to try to replicate a similar kind of feel uh, to this paint here, paint in here. Specifically, I'm going to concentrate around the sky area and then I'm going to work out what I want to do with uh, the bottom area. I quite like this one, it's, it's kind of cute and it's got a lot of warmth to it. So I always have that at the side of me so I can be inspired along the way. And I'm surrounded by the other projects I'm working on uh, today, so you might want to ask questions around them, but I've got about four or five different ones on the way. I've just started to complete the uh, base for my pipeline wave that I'm going to do. So that's going to be interesting to see whether I can control the resin and get it to stay um, as in the area it should be. Gosh, it's very warm here. So what I am going to start with is just plan out where I believe I want my sunset to end. The reason I do that is it just really helps me understand because um, I'm going to mix with yellows and go up and I just want to know where that's going to fall and see. But again, you can start working with it and then have a change of mind along the way. So who do I have watching at the moment? I'm... I don't have the system set up so I can really uh, see that, but I'm going to start with my yellow. The reason I'm starting with my yellow is yellow can be a very um, troublesome colour to work with because it can bleed into so many other colours and make them not, not as vibrant, but to me I actually quite like them. So I am going to start with my sunset a little bit lower because I want my sunset to be... Um, the biggest area of the picture or where the sun's set in the feature. So with acrylics, if you work with them, you'll probably know that they dry very fast. But from a sunset point of view, that's actually a good thing because it means you can add your other colours without toning them down too much. I would love to know what you're all doing today. It is a scorch for us in the UK, quite humid. Anyway, so for me, I start with the yellow and then I'm going to start bleeding through my oranges and reds and just keep working it that way. So at the minute I'm just adding the orange to my palette. Um, there will be a deeper a virilium orange. It's always a fun word to say, virilium. And then I'm bringing out my pinks and reds got to get them out if I do that then I can just keep adding them as I am going what I tend to find on my rule of thumb is always try and keep your darker areas here um, I heard along the way and it does seem to work what that does is it draws your eye in to the painting so it's a very good trick or a way to feature um, your art I really spent a lot of time being drawn to yellows and oranges and as I painted my little one the other day I realised how much I enjoyed working with those colours and I've not worked with them too much while I've been with resin but with acrylic it sort of brought back that love for it. I 
I'm hoping that I've chosen a piece that's small enough for you to see my processing and an opportunity for you to ask questions along the way. Uh, if you've got any questions about any of my videos you have seen on the channel and you feel that there's information you want to know or comment on them, feel free to do that. I do have my iPad just to the side of me and every so often I am glancing and seeing if there is any questions, but you're all quiet today. Hi Carla, so you've got a beautiful day over there as well in the USA. Beautiful, I'm um, not too sure what the time frame is there, I can't remember if you're in front of us or behind us. So I am just trying to bleed through now and tone some of my colours together, but I'm noticing I am using a Losing a little bit of that yellow, but I will come back and add that. I'm just going to phase my orange up a little bit, and then I'm going to start bringing through some slightly deeper tones. Oh, it's in the morning. Not too bad then. Oh, <laughs> don't stress if you're at work. I understand normally I'm at work at this time, but I have the day off because I work weekends. Every so often, and um, although I do love my weekends, the days off through the week mean that I have the day to myself while my partner is working. So that means I get time in the studio, which is great. For those who can't stay around, um, it's not a problem. The video, as you'll be aware, will be on YouTube. So hopefully you'll go back later and see the bits that you've missed. Um, I am planning for future ones to announce, rather than just three hours in advance I'm doing this, maybe a week in advance and tell you what I am going to be painting and the colours I envisage using. So that should give you the opportunity then to go out and organise yourself. And if you want to paint along with me, you can paint along with me. But if you've painted any sunsets and you've got any tips or tricks, feel free to share those. I'm trying to learn the art of concentrating on my painting but remembering to speak out loud about what I'm doing as well as glance over every so often and just see if there's any questions or anything that anybody's discussing around. It's like um, patting your head and rubbing your tummy I would say. That's what it feels like to me but I'm sure <laughs> that, that'll probably depend on how you set your room up so as I'm new to doing live videos I'm fairly new to YouTube I don't really have much in the way of equipment, I'm just making do with what I currently have, which is my phone behind me and my iPad. I'm hoping the volume is okay for me, so I don't know if anybody's there that can just let me know if I am speaking loud enough and the mic's picking it up. Okay, I've just got to be careful for me to add. With this board I'm using, it's a fairly cheap board, I tend to find for the smaller ones or while I'm practicing on an image, I use these, but it does make art more cost effective, you can just get them in packs of five, and for me this one was only, um, I believe it was five pound for a pack of um, four, I believe. Uh, what I find is that while I'm applying this now, I will have to come back through and apply two or three coats on top of them uh, as it starts to absorb into the canvas board but what that does it gives you that opportunity to add different layers and you start to get the different feeling of the, the not too sure if you're back with me there I apologize I appear to have lost connection there just dragging some yellow through but blending it in with the orange just checking the connection still there yeah Might be 
quite therapeutic is doing a live channel with nobody really speaking you just might forget that you're all there and you get a little little look into uh, my artistic process bring um, some of the dark parts there through. Why? I just felt like it. <laughs> just helps me try and balance out the colours and understand where I am working to. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My head's obscuring it. I do apologise. Is that a bit better? <laughs> Thank you for making me aware. <laughs> I hope you're getting a better view there. My arm, unfortunately, will get in the way. I might have to get one of those body cams where you can attach it to your like head or chest so we can see what it is I'm doing. <laughs> Thank you for making me aware. <laughs> do you um do art as well, Carla? <laughs> the lefty. <laughs> I'm doing it. Wrong. I think it just might look that way on the camera. Hey Angie, thank you for popping in. How's your day going? Alright, so gonna work out how I'm gonna start bringing that down and then bring the other colours up. And what kind of art is your preferred medium to work with, Carla? Have you tried resin yet? Well, I'm glad it's so far so good, Angie. My day's starting to wind down. Your day's off from work. Do go so quick. Okay. Just going to work some colours back in there. I'm sure people are popping and out, so... Hopefully, if you do pop out and then pop back in, you'll be seeing progress with this along the way. I do like those two colours together. Starting to give some nice um, definition on movement. Not too sure how, um, how vibrant the colours are showing on the screen. I normally have my camera fairly close to the art, but I couldn't really find a way to do it without it literally being in front of me while I'm painting, which could have been a bit awkward for me. Alright, I'm going to drag some of that dark colour a bit down some up. And for me, it's a process. Um, it just, I keep going backwards and forwards until I'm happy with the colours, until I know that for definite there is no other canvas board sucking it through uh, and for, it's like a feeling um, I get just when I'm looking at the art. I quite like that top part. It's one thing, well not one thing, there's a few things I miss about no longer being in Australia but in WA um, that side you always uh, got quite a few breathtaking views and you're so near the ocean I used to just go down at the time you know the sun was setting and go down there and it'd be very dramatic uh, the different colours you would get in the sky uh, which was just beautiful and whenever I think of a sunset now uh, that's what I am thinking of there at the um, being over there So you're just now getting into resin. It is a 
does give an absolutely beautiful uh, like shine to it. It's very, it makes it very hard to take pictures of your artwork uh, when you're doing anything live as well because of the shine you get on it. <laughs> I find it very hard to get that good picture. <laughs> the cameras, yeah. <laughs> I I kind of wish I was rich enough um, that I could hire like a cameraman um, that could be with me while I'm doing this, so that I could just get on with the art and somebody else could make sure that the viewers. Sorry about my arm if it's in the way, but every so often I'll need to just go around the edges and um, get some better shots for you, so you can see the colours as they're coming around. Kind of feel like I want a little brighter red though. I might have to go find one. Just seeing what happens if I bring a little bit of the per uh, pink in the sky. Do you get many great sunsets where you're based? Um, are you near the ocean as well? Not that that really matters for sunsets, just a curious question. absorb through at the top so I'm just gonna have to probably just repeat that process <laughs> yeah I uh, it is going to be an ocean theme I'm gonna have the ocean at the bottom here so I'm not gonna um, disappear too much from it but um, I think I've mentioned in my other videos but you may not have heard it that um, one of the reasons I have stopped playing with my oil paintings currently because I used to be very, very uh, addicted to my oil paintings. There's one just on the wall behind me, but I don't know if you can see it. So it is another ocean one as well. Um, but the reason I got into resin is I could never capture the real movement that I wanted in my oceans in oils or acrylics. And even though I do love them, and I think you can get some nice pieces of art with them. For me personally, I kept seeing this lady uh, putting an art on Instagram and wondering how... How did she do that? And then uh, I managed to find out it was through resin. But then when I started with resin, I didn't actually start doing oceans. I was too, ooh, that was kind of a bit, a little bit too dark for me there. I'll see how I feel about that. Um, but I played around doing different images for a while because I just wanted to understand how do you manipulate resin, how do you get the best out of it, um, and how can you uh, transfer your skills from your other mediums over. Um, and I don't know why it's taken me so while, such a, a while to start working on my uh, oceans, but now I'm on them. I'm a little bit addicted and I'm getting a nice little theme happening, um, ready for when I um, put on a show or do an exhibition. So, yeah, I do love a little bit and I'm still, I'm still working out how to get the best out of the, the resin and hence why I'm now pushing it and going to try the, the pipeline wave and... See if I can make that look realistic um, and catch a movement. Yeah, there's never enough time to play, is there? <laughs> never enough time to play with art. Especially if uh, you're not fortunate to do it full time and you have to do your other jobs and then there's real life. And then I found the challenge for me is... Um, how do I spend time with my partner? How do I go to work and have a successful career? How do I find time to create art and then edit the videos? And um, first of all, problems and all. <laughs> um, there's just never enough time. I'm just starting to bring my yellow through now and just envisage how I'm wanting it to fit across here where it's going to blend into the ocean. And in my mind's eye, I'm seeing more yellow at the bottom here and then it's going to fan fan over a little bit so that's the good thing about um, if you can make live videos work you don't have to edit I'm just bringing my yellow down here but that's where the ocean's really going to be it's just 
Lên lại em Quite transparent this shallow Ooh, how long do I let my paintings dry before a resin? I get itchy feet. Um, I don't leave it for a full day. I leave it until it's uh, dry to touch. Uh, and currently in the heat that we've got here, it's, it's drying fairly quickly. Um, for as long as it's dry to the touch and it's not coming through, then you can apply your resin fairly quickly, definitely within four hours, uh, probably even less time than that. I sort of, I don't necessarily read the manufacturer's instructions, I'm terrible, but I do have a, uh, I just go in my gut and a feel of it. I think there's only one time where uh, I pushed it a little bit too far, or should I say too quick, and there was just one tiny little paint that started to come up in the resin, but luckily it didn't um, ruin the image. Sorry, I'm just stepping back and seeing. I want this to go. It's like, like I said, rubbing your tummy and patting your head. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to bring it closer and just have a little look from the angle to the side. It's not that good, so quite like that. Just want to think about the clouds now. So I'm just going to. I don't like my pieces much on and I do hate waste, especially with resin because it's so expensive. I find that uh, acrylic's quite fun to work with at the minute though because if I am wanting to do an underpainting, which is what I prefer to do for my paintings, uh, it dries quick so you can just get on with it. I don't know if, I sh if you manage to see, I'm just drying my hands, this is one that's just finishing curing. Uh, it's a little dint there, oh, little dint there that I am going to work on, but I absolutely love this piece. The movement and depth um, that I've got from the waves is what I'm going to try and do on the two big pieces here. So that one has had its underpainting and it's got its first coat of resin, but then I'm going to come and add more movement here. And I am going to, who's that? Hi Tina! <laughs> yeah, uh, and then I'm going to apply, I've applied my second base coat of resin here and then I'm going to go back and apply my resin but the fun one's going to be the pipeline there to see if I can capture the movement that I've got here where the waves are coming over but I quite like some of these cute little pieces. We're always looking for different ways to do things, shortcuts, anything. So I'm just going to wash out my brush. And I'm going to start at the top and work my way back down. I think I've done something with my paint. I've added a little bit of orange to the uh, yellow there, so I'm just going to have to clean that out. Is the painting still at a good angle for you? Let me just twist it a little bit more. What you'll find as well is when you add the darkness at the bottom here, that is going to uh, make the colours pop as well. And then when you're happy with your piece and you put the resin on top, as you'll know, it'll bring out the colours even more. Ah, glad that's a good angle for you, Angie. I've got about four different videos ready for editing and uploading on the pieces that I'm working on in the background. But I thought rather than do that tonight, I'll just do a live. I really have messed up and got so much orange in this lemon. Oranges and lemons. Uh, this is where sometimes you have to be brave because if you've got a section you really like, um, you can be a little bit scared that you're going to ruin it, but you just got to have the confidence to go back in there and if you know that you've gone over a piece you like, you can bring it back anyway as you're working through it. But unfortunately, 
I do have to do this because there's so much of the little white things coming through. But if you work with it, you can tend to find that it will add a little bit more depth as well. And there's no point rushing it. Just gotta take your time and do it right. Oh, and a fly's come to join me. As long as it's not a wasp, I'm happy. If you see me keep bending back like that, <laughs> I don't have OCD or anything like that, not that there's an issue if you do, it's just whenever I'm adding things or, or doing anything, when you're on top of it you can't see it, so if you step back you can see where it is that you like or don't like or keep working with it, so um, normally you don't see that in my resin videos because you don't get to see me normally. Uh, but if you see me doing that, that's just the reason why. So if you do do that, great. If you don't, I encourage you to do it. Because you do get to see your picture from a different angle and what's working or what's not or maybe what other people are seeing. Because when you're creating your work, uh, you're too far in the process to really see things from a different perspective. Okay, I quite like what's happening around there. with the different colours, your clouds or your light that's reflecting off your sun should start to happen organically and then you just work with your with your clouds that are there. to orange in there. Okay, I'm bring that out. Yeah, I do, uh, Carla, I've been uh, um, I've been a little bit slack recently because uh, I re relocated from Australia and most of my work has been over there and I'm, uh, that's all being shipped over soon. So uh, I had to restart my collection again and rebrand, uh, mainly just because of uh, a separation uh, with, my, with my ex. And so over there I'd managed to get myself where I could go out and do markets i've done a few exhibitions and i've sold things on redbubble and my website uh, but until i get most of the stuff there i haven't and obviously i've, I've changed my name so i'm rebranding so i've had to start again and the one thing i've done is managed to get my collection back up now finally but uh, at the same time i've been really slack at putting it up myself <laughs> So I do still sell stuff, but it just comes uh, without me sort of pushing too much for it. But I've got to get a little bit more strategic and I've got to get my website up and running again and get an Etsy account or through Facebook. So, yeah. Are you good at selling yours? Not too sure. I quite like that little bit of yellow there, but I'm not too sure if it's too much. So I'm just going to... Bring that out a little bit and just have it more. That's a bit better. But what that's done now, I just want to highlight that a little bit with the orange. Okay, that's a bit better. I did it in Australia as well. Um, oh gosh, what's it called? Wow, that's left my head. Um, it's where all artists, uh, artists or new artists, 
uh, go and do an exhibition together. Um, and once you've done it once, you can do it um, anywhere in the world. And I can't think what it's called. <laughs> oh dear. Your brain's a little bit fatigued from the heat. I'm getting my collection up as well so that I can do a little exhibit exhibition. How are we doing for time? Okay, not too bad. I'm going to try not to keep you too long and also mindful that my fellow will be home from work in half an hour. So if he does come in and I'm still he uh, painting, I do apologise. Yeah, it's the it's the um, it's the finding time part. I mean, I've got a demand for my art. People are asking to buy. I keep saying, just come back in a week or a month, and I'll sort it out. Okay, I don't like what I've done here or what's happening here, so I'm just gonna um, just tone that down. That's quite nice. Quite like the single street there. saying to my partner uh, he's going to help me uh, get my website up to sell oh good luck with your art show i keep thinking to myself as well we should all well we all should um christmas is not too long around the corner so whether you celebrate christmas or not um it's a great opportunity for you to sell some of your work um and one of the things i've tried to do which i've not been really good at is be commercial um, so you're working six months in advance on the kind of art or things people are going to want to buy whether it be Christmas cards so I don't know if anybody's gearing up for that but it is just around the corner really so I would imagine market stalls or uh, places to sell your work is going to increase I'm just adding a few bits of pinking might not be the interesting part for uh, you all because for me I can see um, as it's starting to come together whereas it, for you it just might look like I'm doing a lot of repetition but it's just that small little bit of detail work. Hey Kathy from Wyoming. Oh, I'm so glad that you've learned so much. <laughs> that was the whole point of my channel, uh, more than anything, is to give back and give people the courage or confidence to give it a go. And resin is such a fun medium to have a go with. It ends up making your art look so professional. Oh, that was just beautiful. Thank you, Kathy. That was a beautiful comment. <laughs> it's comments like that that keep me going. And that's not, not me just saying that. <laughs> that's true because um, I would imagine that most of you self-doubt your own work sometimes or um, the effort that you have to put in. And this is why you're probably going to hear me talk a lot more on my channels about um, the adverts that are now running and uh, watch them if possible or at least... 30 seconds of them I know that they're frustrating but it's one way of getting a small little bit of uh, money to help pay for your your channel uh, and your supplies and also um, the links that I've got on my descriptions now with the um, affiliate that you've got with Amazon again there's no extra charge to um, anybody else that's buying them but it does mean that a small percent goes towards you and it, it is a small percent. But everything helps and adds up uh, and helps your cost. But your positive comment there uh, really helps me uh, keep going um, when you have those periods of self-doubt as to am I adding any value? Is it worth it? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm really enjoying that um, myself personally. <laughs> 
I hope you guys are too. <laughs> it's one of those where it's like, if I'm enjoying it, then I don't mind who's watching because I can hold my head up proud and say, you know what, I like where this is going and I'm happy with that. And that's the one of the things you've got to do. Stick true to your own vision. And it may not be what everybody likes. And you just have to accept that. Uh, but hold your head up proud and stand by your own art because there are people out there that will love it. Hmm. And with this I would say don't rush it, just keep keep going because the detail work is what makes the difference between a good piece of art or a great piece of art and that's why for me there's this backwards and forwards of keep going and checking that you've got the right amount of texture that there are no white bits of your canvas coming through and that you keep standing back and looking at if that sun was hitting that uh, if the sun is setting but it's still hitting the clouds is it hitting the same area all the way through and is that because that will help trick your mind to see more depth I hope that made sense. That sounded like a little bit of a rabble, that one. I knew what I was trying to say. A lot of art is about tricking your mind. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, for me, I think it's only, is it five seconds or 30 seconds and no more? Um, I've not um, asked for anything more than like, well, I've not asked for anything because I, I don't really have that many followers. So I'm only just hitting the duration. But I just, um, to my friends and family, all I've said, if you are going to watch one, if you can just watch a, a maximum of 30 seconds, it sort of helps. And it's just a shame that there are uh, no other ways. Well, there are ways. That's, that sounds wrong. But if people enjoy their art and they want to do it and they want to give their channels out, it can be quite costly. So... So as you've got to find a way of making a little bit of money back um, so you can uh, continue with your channel. So it's, it's, it's tough, there's a, there's a fine balance. Yeah, five minutes ads, I, I, I agree. I don't know why, why there's a need for a five minute ad. quite liking that rightness there so I'm going to do that on that side okay I'm getting just about there with the sky I believe Okay, so I've just got to think about how I'm going to phase this through to the. Actually, now I'm just going to stick my head in front of it just for a few seconds. Just want to see if that's level the way that is. So it's normally lighter as it meets the ocean. Just across here, but just thinking of how I'm going to phase it through. I think I'm going to add a little bit more pink this way. Oh, it's a bit dark though. in the orange and yellow there. Um, yes, I do consider transparency levels, Angie. Um, the colours I'm using for my sky tonight, and I've just got uh, Crawford and Black, 
So I, for the darkest, darker ones, I am using a uh, deep red. Uh, that's where you're getting the tones uh, at the back there, which is phasing through to uh, scarlet. Love a little bit of scarlet. Um, then I have a Virilium, which is a deeper orange, but a really nice warm orange. And as it starts to lighten up, I have just, it's just called orange. So that's quite nice and juicy. And I have my yellow. Uh, I'm blending it between two different yellows, which is mid yellow and lemon yellow. And the transparencies is a good question. I mean, I am not trained professionally in any way. And sometimes I say words in R and I don't even know if it's the right word for R, but what I look for normally is vibrancy and colour. And I seem to have a natural gift for blending and colour choices, but I don't get too worried um, about if I know I'm going to put something on and it's not going to work. But transparency to me matters more when I'm doing resin because I really do want a transparency when I'm applying my water so that I get the layers underneath and I get movement. Um, but when I put on the lemon yellow, that is too transparent for me. And so I, I'll i move on and find a different way around it. But for such as this, all I'm working on is the colour tones rather than the depth. Uh, and I'll have to come back through and add a little bit more because I can see the canvas board. Just tiny little things popping through now. But you can see, hopefully, a lot of depth there and a feeling of clouds and movements. Um, but I just, I've never really bought top of the range paints. I'll just buy a colour palette that I enjoy and I'll work with it. And then if I feel that I'm going to be doing it on a big piece, uh, then I'll invest more money into it uh, and time. But uh, I love oils. Um, but no, I don't really worry too much about transparency. I don't know if that answered your question. I seem to be waffling a bit today, people. <laughs> I think it's the heat. Uh, hi, Pat. Yeah, it is It is a really nice colour. I have uh, I feel that to complement my oceans, I'm going to be doing some oceans but with sunsets. I think I'm going to build a big collection up around that because I'm finding that I really do love uh, the feeling that I get with this and the movement. And I think you've got to do what sings to your heart, really, haven't you? All right, I'm just going to swap my brushes over and just tidy up as I go back through. I'm just going to concentrate a little bit more on this area. And then although I do need to touch more bits up here, I'm going to come in with the bottom part just so I can start to make the picture come together. And it might be a little bit more exciting for you than seeing me keep going over the sky. When doing such as this, I never know whether I should just stick to one, one area and just stick with it and do it well and then come back on another day and finish the bottom or whether I should just really power through um, and give people the opportunity to ask questions or just see my process. I mean, I'm not here to teach you all or anything, but some people um, have been asking a lot about what do I think about when I'm painting? Why do I do things in certain ways and questions? So it's really just a way to connect and answer those questions that people may ask or understand. So for me, I tend to, I think I've mentioned it before, but when I paint, I paint with feelings. Uh, so as I'm doing this, I'm imagining myself being on that beach and thinking about when I have been over in Australia and seen these and um, I really try and use that as my uh, driver for art, hence why I find it a little bit hard when I'm doing something live because it has it keeps pulling me out of that space that I normally go to um, when I'm creating in my imagination. Go a little bit of imagination. I just wanted to bring the yellow out a little bit more there. I'm going to do it a little bit more here as well. I'm struggling. A little bit. I think that it's just going on there. <laughs> Tell myself a little story as well. <laughs> like the sun is just going under um, the horizon now. So what you see. some of my yellow out just want to line up a 
a little bit towards the edges. Oh. And then I'm going to bring some of that orange back through. I like what's happening there but I'm not happy with how it's looking so um, I'm going to come back through with my orange at the edge but I may as well just carry on just adding the tone that I want. Okay, that's good in there. <laughs> My palette, and I am a very messy worker. I, uh, I'm constantly wiping my brush everywhere on me. It's, I've even got sheets of paper on uh, my table because normally I'm in the conservatory, which is where I call my creative space, but it's too hot, so I've had to sit in here today. But um, yeah, <laughs> I get the colour palette all over me. I don't know what you guys are like. How many layers are there? This is my second layer here. Uh, Tina so I went through first and mapped it out I've gone back through and added it again but that's when I started to see where my clouds are going to be and add that little bit of texture there isn't too much that needs to be done back at the top I can see a little bit there and there it's more really do I want to highlight anything and um, I feel like there's something just need doing in that top area there I love the middle section and I'm just going to finish off this bottom section Thank you, Kathy, for popping by. Really appreciate it. Hope you feel better. <laughs> no worry, Tina. Ask any questions you've got along the way. Just going to make the orange, I think, as the bottom part here. Sometimes I find as well, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, that... Um, I might start painting and have a certain idea in my head but that idea will change the minute my paintbrush hits the canvas because sometimes some of my mistakes uh, end up creating some amazing uh, ideas or suggestions so I'm very free with going whatever uh, the paint or the canvas is telling me as well like the bright orange there I was only going to put a little bit there but it went quite bold but when I saw that then I'm thinking yep I really like that so I added it to the other side I'm just going to define a bit of lines here I think the oceans that are surrounding me here my pieces I'm just like yeah I could just go in the water about now in, when I was in Australia working on my oil paintings uh, I remember I had to carry on working on this piece that I'd sold or was selling uh, when I needed it ready and the only way I could work through the temperatures over there because the art studio I had which was a shed didn't have air conditioning and it was when it was 42 degrees so I sat in there with a mini portable aircon I got three fans on and I had to stick my feet in ice water just so that I could stay cool enough to carry on working on my picture. That's how dedicated I was. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to capture these pieces here that I've seen that are a little bit of white coming through. It was dedication. I remember her, um, she was a Spanish flamenco and it was when I, she was with oils but she was at a certain point where I couldn't leave it. I needed to carry on working on it the next day so that I could get the image that I wanted. And it was my first, no second, second dance, no third dancer that I'd done uh, on a canvas with oils and it turned out beautiful but because it was all red and there was so much movement and she was doing this dramatic pose, there was so much energy coming from that painting that it almost felt like it was a dance between me and her as to was she going to break me in this process. But I came out on top. I was very happy that eventually I tamed my Spanish flamenco 
and ended up with a beautiful beautiful piece but that was the time when I had to sit with my feet in the uh, in the bucket all right I'm gonna try not to overwork I just feel like I need a little bit of something just there this is where that little voice is in my head saying don't overwork it Okay, so I'm happy with that. What I want to do is just to add that little bit of pink back in. Just want to do that subtly. the darker orange there and maybe the red. Sorry, I've gone very quiet now. <laughs> this is me just trying to um, just do the final detail and try not to overwork which can be a downfall of myself sometimes have you ever worked on a piece that you've absolutely loved um, and you worked it to the max and then you're like yeah that's it it's done <laughs> I've had done it I think three times in my whole artistic journey normally I like to keep anything I've worked on and uh, rework it but there's been three pieces that along the way I've never let anybody see um, one of them went in the bin I was just I was just so angry with it I was just so frustrated with it so I just put the canvas in the bin nobody was allowed to see it that was within the first six months of learning art and, and practicing it <laughs> and then um, there's one that I did which was a big beach scene it was lovely but there was too much dust in it so I went back to fix it up but then I attempted to play with it and then it, and then I ruined it. So then I went to fix it and it came all good, but then I pushed it again. So that's currently turned to the side, so I can't see it. I'm not giving up on it, but I will have to start from the beginning on it again. Oh, Angie, you've had the same experience. It's awful, isn't it? Awful. Are you talking about Tina when I uh, complete a resin art and then I come through and I embellish it and do some art on top of it with painting? If you do, there's nothing special I do with that. I just um, let it fully dry and then I use my acrylics to paint on it. Uh, and it it's always stick to it. When you're doing your resin, are you applying, adding anything to it like um, resin blasts or anything that's oily? I don't add anything to mine. So I'm just cleaning my paintbrush and I'm going to come in now with the ocean. Um, but no, on, on the ones I've embellished, it always sticks to it, the acrylics. So uh, unless you're trying oils or unless you've added anything to your resin, it should work. 
and Angie it makes me feel a bit better to know that you've had a few paintings as well that you've had to trash because it makes me feel like I'm not the only one <laughs> all right so I am going to come in with a darker ocean and I'm going to try and maybe this time not add as much of the shimmer of should I say the colors although I quite like it um, this one here just the fun piece I showed you before split it in half and then I add my colors and I am uh, gonna do something similar but maybe not as much color and see what I feel um, needs to go there but before I move on I'm gonna add my little um, bird let's see Oh, hello, Daniel. <laughs> well, but you want me to just put a tree there? I, I, I missed that one. Anyway, let me just add my bird that's flying off into the sunset. There you go. Look at that. Instantly. Two strokes and there's a bird. So I am just going to clear off my, that off my stick. And I'm trying to make sure I don't ruin my brushes along the way. There's a temptation of just slinging them down because it'll be more efficient. But then I'll have to pay more money to buy more. All right. Bob Frost. <laughs> you can't call me Bob Ross again. You've got to call me something else. What can I be? Betty, Betty Ross? No. Oh, I quite like that blue, although it's not necessarily the right colour for this, but we'll see. It is nice, though, to see... Well, I don't know if there's many out there, so you can tell me. Um, I noticed that live is becoming a big thing now on YouTube, and there's a lot of people doing live when it comes to resin, but I'm not really seeing too many people doing... Uh, live art with a brush now I may be incorrect I'm sure there's people out there but normally what I've found in my own personal uh, search on the YouTube it's normally people that charge you to watch so it's like a tutorial um, other than ones that you can find like Bob Ross <laughs> Mary Ross I quite like Mary Ross <laughs> Yeah, I always remind Bob Ross. My dad used to talk about Bob Ross, and the, the, when anybody says Bob Ross, I always think of Prussian blue. Prussian blue. I'm going to add some Prussian blue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to add my blue. There's going to be no texture at this stage, but then I'm going to come and start to add a little bit of the white for the foam of the ocean. But I'm only going to do that after I've applied my first coat because so I just want to make sure that there's going to be no white showing through and I want to make sure I add a little bit of reflection from the the sunset but I don't want to add too much going down here so and then once I've done that where I'll work out is do I then want to go and add anything else into it but that would be for another day I'd want to make sure that this totally dries and when you do oceans with a paint brush it's the easiest thing to do if you don't think that you're drawing an ocean if you just move your brush backwards and forwards like I'm doing there in different directions and the correct way to do an ocean if you are going to be trained by somebody if you watch it it's kind of like a like that kind of motion and that's supposed to give your mind the impressions of the waves lapping up <laughs> much better looking Bob Ross. I don't know I don't think the back of my head is the best angle <laughs> but I'll take it because it is it because I think Bob Ross is dead now is it so I'm glad I'm better looking than him. Okay, I'll check those names out. It's nice to see a little bit of, in my opinion, um, um, norm. When I say normal, that sounds really bad. Something that's not fluid art, um, where you're actually seeing um, different techniques. Uh, I'm 
definitely drawn to fluid art, I'm definitely drawn to resin, but oh, there's something about a brush that's so, um, so good and it helps keep your skills set up and train your brain. When did I start painting? Wow, that's a good question. I believe it was 2014, although I think I've got 2015 uh, towards the end. So I I did art at school and I was naturally gifted. My dad, at a very young age, he's really good at art. Um, he doesn't do much with it, but he's just naturally gifted. He spent a lot of time teaching me and my sister all about depth uh, perception so when other kids I'm just going to have to flip this to one side I do apologize when other children were being taught how to draw a house with uh, like a square and the squares inside for the windows and the door my dad was teaching me about 3d um, just basic it wasn't like no pressure or anything like that but from a very young age I learned about perspective and um, which probably put me to an advantage at school and my what used to get ex exhibited or like what for school brochures and that like if you want to do art as your uh, studies and I was good at drama but then I grew up and got a job and I'm now 46 soon to be 47 I cried when I was 46 I love celebrating my birthdays I'm always thankful to be alive and I always find it a special day, but I did, I did cry for 46 whenever anybody says happy birthday. And it wasn't necessarily sobbing cries, I'm di digressing. Uh, it was just like, oh, 46. <laughs> anyway, so I never did anything with art at all until um, 2014. I was in a stressful period in my life and I wanted to relax my brain and not be stressed or anxious. So I went into my son's bedroom who just turned 18 the other day uh, and got out his crayons and pencils and I just drew my first beach scene uh, for a while so I took a picture uh, of the sunset and I tried to replicate that and the painting itself was pretty crap it's on my my Facebook page for you to see my journey from right from the first painting I did um, to now and although the painting wasn't the best the experience of quieting my mind uh, was brilliant so from then on every day I picked up um, drawing uh, painting drawing and stretched my muscle of my brain and other than when I relocated from Australia to here I didn't do art for 12 months because it was a bit stressful leaving all my artwork over there and when you've put your heart and soul into something it's very hard to start again but I did uh, and really for the past 12 months I've been doing art again so it's probably only gosh when would that be oh gosh <laughs> what were you aging for I'd say only about four years in total I look 26 you you're just a you're just a smoothie anyway I digressed a lot but that's a little bit more about Sharon Okay, so this blue is definitely a nice blue, but it's a little bit lighter than what I wanted it to be. But I'm just going to go with it just so I've got my base coat. And then I'm going to uh, add some more blue to it. I think actually, I think that is a Prussian blue, is it? Oh no, it's Pathalia. Well, Prussian blue is a lot darker. It's going to say Bob Ross. All right. The good thing is, it's making the colours pop. And I never w worry too much about my ocean line there being straight, because when you look into the horizon, although it is straight, you, not necessarily, you get like movement of the waves and things like that, so I'm not too stressed. However, I can see where I will need to go back uh, through the orange there. 
No, I don't mainly do beaches and nature, believe it or not. <laughs> I've just got a little bit obsessed with it because I'm no longer living by the ocean. Uh, and there seems to be a high demand or interest for the beach scenes. Um, I specialise in drawing people, believe it or not, faces. So if you used to go to my um, Facebook page, you'd see there that there are lots of people in, in oils and, and sometimes they're not necessarily representing a true likeness of a person uh, and sometimes they are so I can do very good um, drawings, charcoals, pencils uh, of people and make them look like people <laughs> or the person they're meant to be uh, but that's really I'd say normally I find people so so fascinating to draw with the personalities and although they're not like a, a photo image of the person otherwise you may as well take a photo what i tend to be fairly good at i believe is capturing the soul of the person so in the eyes and the facial expressions and i am very good at animals but i don't find them a challenge to do and that's why i focused on doing people because to get a piece of art to look like a particular person it's actually challenging because you only need to put your eyes or your proportions slightly out and it changes the whole look of the person and the dynamics so because it, I tend to do the things that I find challenging because it interests me um, uh, Danielle I usually specialize in oil paintings believe it or not uh, but I'm very good with pencil I'm good with charcoal I very rarely work with acrylics believe it or not because I find or found previously acrylics frustrating because they dry as soon as you apply them whereas oil paintings I love the challenge of how you use that medium and I also love the fact that you can work on it for weeks um, and I still do it so oh, you're a photographer well done do love a good photography all right so I'm just going to start now phasing through some darker um, but then what I'm hoping to do is bring a little bit of the uh, white through for the I want to say the horses but uh, bring some white through for the foam or the glisten and I'm going to try and keep some area in the middle here lighter and that's where I'm going to add the tones of the colours coming through I'm thinking that uh, not today but tomorrow I might do one with a boat on there and the reason I'm trying to put the dark here and bring you in is because it's a trick of the eye that when you see I'll bring it closer to you make sure I've got no paint on my fingers and grilled it what you find is uh, because the sun's setting there and it's lighter here it draws your eye to this part which is going to be the center part of the painting or that's my theory anyway but it's very hard not having the painting very level to me that's a skill set there doing a painting from the side and slightly to an angle sorry I've just had to move it a bit just so that I can check the and sometimes you have to be brave and do something like I've just done there but I'm gonna have to level that off now what are you doing for the rest of the day then, Daniel? And who's that lovely person that you have on your, in your picture? Sorry, this part, I'm just covering the picture up because I'm just concentrating on trying to get that level. And that's something I might need to do when I'm facing forward a little bit because it looks like it's bowing a little bit now. Anyway, okay, add some lighter tones there. Hey, 
ever try sculpting oh gosh no my sister who is trained in art she's uh, uh, been to Unifory and she's so artistic but she really likes <laughs> out there art which is not everybody's cup of tea but she loves sculpting for her degrees uh, um, she's out there banging things together she's got a welder out and she's just amazing not my kind of art but all of her confidence and she's one of these where she says if there's rules for art she'll break them she doesn't like doing art the way people say you're supposed to do it or or train so she, she's my hero okay so in my mind now what i'm thinking about is how i can add a little bit of white into this but not too much and then a little bit of color I'm just going to experiment with this. Hi Tina, thank you for watching. I'm so thankful that you took some of your time and came in here and hung out for a little bit. Hopefully it wasn't too boring and you were able to still carry on with stuff. And enjoy your day at work. Okay. Just be mindful I don't want to put too much on here so... So I'm just using the backwards and forwards crossing motion to see if I can capture a feeling of movement. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're such a positive person, Daniel, with all those challenges. No worries, Angie. Thank you for hanging out. Really appreciate it. Oh, so that went a little bit too... There was too much white there, so I just need to soften that back a bit. Okay, so I think I need a smaller brush. Do no, I'm going to stick with this. I'm going to do it just a little bit. I don't want too much because you don't want to overwork it, but you just want that suggestion. But as it comes nearer, and you want it to look like moving I'd say that the moon's catching it but the moon's not out yet because the sun's going down so I do want to add there you go that's quite good I'm glad you enjoy watching Daniel you paint yourself and you're doing it so delicately you want to make sure you've not got too much on your brush but then sometimes you think no oh, I needed more and now I'm going to be able to get that same brush stroke again but if you can see there just by doing what you're doing you're just giving that illusion that there's movement in the water and uh, there's the foam as it's breaking up Yeah, it's good to like all kinds of art. I think you've got to be open to keep learning or watching or seeing different things. I've got a little fly around that's just buzzing away. Okay, so 
but what am I thinking now? I, in my head, sorry, I'm just trying to think out loud. The minute I've just been looking at uh, my waves to see if they're looking like they're getting bigger as they get nearer you, and I'm checking if it's balancing out. Ah, you into all you wood. Gosh, wood is amazing. Um, when people what what people can do with it, I definitely wouldn't have a talent for that. gonna probably park this a little bit now and maybe just add a little bit more position to the white as I like its waves. Sorry if I keep missing your um, questions. I just need to keep looking at what I'm doing here for this part. Just making those look like the waves that are rolling through. I don't wanna do too many of those. She says while well, doing another one. <laughs> it's not what I don't do what I do don't do it don't do what I do do what I say that's correct <laughs> just doing all these little pegs here no it's not digital out I just feel I'm just sorry that I'm not necessarily uh seeing everything you're doing. I have a, a child who's just turned 18. He's in Australia still with his dad. And I have um, a son uh, who passed away many, many years ago. His name was Lloyd. And Neil, my partner, he has Three children so even though they're not mine I get the joy when they come over to visit him of having his kids around as well which is amazing and Ethan is artistic but he doesn't really enjoy doing art or doesn't go out of his way to do it I think I want to just um, park the waves now only because I feel like I'm and I can, if I feel that I have overworked the waves I can definitely um, blank them out a little bit more I just want that sense of movement just do a few more at the front here and then I'm going to add that little bit of sun uh, reflection on the waves there. So you should do the crisscross and then stick back and, and think, does that look right? Am I happy with that? And then blank out the ones that I'm not happy with. So that there just doesn't make sense to me. So I'm just gonna move that out now. And I'm going to add a few little bit of lighter pieces at the front here. So it looks like it's rippling. Doesn't seem like it's capturing. I definitely do play music uh, normally while I'm painting. That's why sometimes it's a pleasure to do 
um, videos in fast forward so that I can listen to my music but it's very hard when you're doing the YouTube because I don't want to infringe copyright or anything like that and I definitely wouldn't be able to listen to music whilst telling you what I'm doing with the art and then whilst um, answering questions <laughs> that'd be one one step too many all right that's doesn't make sense so painting that out okay that's the good thing with acrylics because they do dry so quickly you can be like yep yeah, no don't like that let's get rid of that and I think that's what you've not got to be afraid to do with your art which is try something and if you don't like it um, move it out and it doesn't matter that there's people watching they get to see that we're all human and that nobody does a perfect picture in one go quite like that okay so what I'm doing now is just coming and adding a few eyelashes uh, highlights highlights where the waves I'm happy with where I've got the little uh, whiteness there for the foam I'm just adding a tiny little bit of the blue underneath and that gives you the impression that that wave is risen so I'm just gonna just do that to a few more and that should give you a, a more of a feeling of the ocean moving and then I can come back and add more white onto the foam so that um, it looks brighter in places or it looks like there's more uh, movement or the, the water's flipping up flipping up flicking up Look like they're coming towards you now. All right, so just want to get rid of need some more paint on my brush. Just pulling back now on some of the waves um, that I feel that I need to do just to make the picture or the overall composition a bit better. love a good ocean and it's like it's so nice to just get movement in there and gives you the feeling of being by the beach or on a boat somewhere but you'll probably tell I love oceans with the amount of uh, the ones that are happening at the minute by me but you do what you love that's what I say do what you love it's more at the front I'm uh, doing this uh, the back would be darker anyway you wouldn't really you'll be able to see too much lightness if I, I think this will be the last one that will look like it's lighter and then I think So I'm just going to be foaming. I'm just going to add a tiny little bit more of the deeper blue to the edges. Just because I want to and I can. See, the reason being though, seriously, it does just bring your eye in to what's going to be um, the main sort of feature, hopefully. Some white bits up there, so just wanted to make sure I got those. And then it is time to bring through a 
with my uh, colours. So you might not be able to see the depth that I've been doing there, but I'll just bring it closer um, just so you can see a little bit there. All right, final stage is going to be just adding that little bit of colour. No, I don't do this for full time. This is on my day off from work. <laughs> I'm out there like the rest of you. I have to work for a living. This is a, a passion and a pleasure uh, to do. And, but by no means uh, do I get the, the fun of doing this full time. I wish I could. <laughs> all right, so I've got my palette back with all the stuff. Just gotta make sure I am not gonna add too much, but just enough. So I'm just dragging through. A little bit of reflection from um, the sunset. So you might not be able to see this very clearly yet. Uh, it's just me going through and adding a little bit of the um, ripples from the sky. Just need to make sure I don't add too much, but just enough. Again, I'll just be uh, concentrating a little bit on this. Because I think it's where the, the sun is just kissing the ocean. So it's like, how much is enough? Okay, the fun part or the, the challenging part is adding a little bit of that yellow so it doesn't go green. I'm hoping that it's uh, gonna dry enough for it not to be uh, dragging the blue back. Okay, that's looking a little bit too strong, so I'm just gonna. Um, Blend it in a little bit. And we'll see. Okay, that's quite nice, sort of. Maybe just a little bit up here. And this again, I have no rhyme or reason. Um, I have no way of knowing what this is going to look like, really. I'm just um, playing around with it and experimenting. I want that reflection without working too hard um, and try not to ruin it. <laughs> I'm just working out. Do I keep it more to the back there and don't bring it forward? Who knows? What do you think? Well, so far it's not profitable endeavour when you're paying all your money to do your channel. Slides, but we'll keep positive. I do have people interested in my art, so that's positive. And that sounds like my fella's just back from work. So it's a good time to be winding this up. Just add a little bit more colour here so you can see what I'm doing. And then I think we'll be calling this a wrap. Quite like that subtleness coming down. Me personally anyway. Hello. 
good. I'm just finishing my picture. Oh, you're not lively. Yeah, yeah, I am. <laughs> I am winding up though. Okay, so I feel like I'm getting enough um, sort of colour coming through. I'm actually quite liking that. I think I might just keep it in sort of an area. Um, what's that you know in a cup of tea? Come and have a look, what do you think? Don't stand in front of my camera. As if I would. I'm trying this time to not do too much colour down, but just keep it around there. It's very pleased to be vigilant. Mm. You went quiet then, I thought, oh, oh, he's not liking this. No, I was just watching the delay on <laughs> the <five head. laughs> No, I do like it, actually. More detail on the wave. Yeah. The I C section. Yeah, this time I've tried to restrain the colours all going down, but... Um, have that sense of movement with the ocean. Mm. Uh, I'm quite happy with. Um, got your, got your bird. Yeah, I put my bird in. There's always a bird, and even if I do take a picture, when I'm watching the sunset, I always manage to capture a bird in there. <laughs> yeah, you do. Um, oh, that's nice. Thank you. Just trying to, a little bit, but not too much there. <laughs> Alrighty, so this is where I scare myself sometimes um, and when I say scare myself is as I mentioned when I was doing the sky is knowing when is enough enough um, and I'm getting to the point where I can s um, I'm happy with the um, amount of sunset that's reflecting on the water but I just want to make sure that there's a balance of colour and now I'm just going to start building it in with what it looks like above. But controlling myself so I don't overwork it. That's a challenge for Sharon. And knowing whether it would actually, um, how far down it would come um, if the sun's in the ocean would you have that color all over um, or where would that come to so in my head that's just where I'm asking myself at the minute it's gone a little bit heavy there but Worried. But I do like some of the bolder colours that are coming through because what that's doing is making it feel like it has um, it's hitting the reflection of the moon or the sunset. That part didn't make sense then because that would have just been flat. just add some more yellow like I thought the yellow has absorbed a little bit into the blue but if I just go and add the main highlights now I do want to get more yellow in the middle there is reflecting. It's gone a little bit, a bit too much there, but I'll keep that part bright and then Like that. Okay, just shake 
in where they are at the other screen. It's definitely still free. I believe I am, I know I keep saying this, I think I'm just about done with this piece, it just needs to dry and then me work out if I need to come back and do a second coat tomorrow, add anything else. So I will bring you in, sorry, talking as I'm painting. A good skill set I have. I really like that yellow. Deal. I'm gonna overwork this now, so I'm gonna pull away, put the brush down, Sharon. Put the brush down. All right. I will leave. Oh, leave it here, and I will assess what this is going to be like. There we go. So I'm just gonna park this one for now let it dry see if i'm happy with the composition uh, and then touch up any areas and then come back and resin it so i know this has been a long video but i just wanted to say thank you for taking the time for hanging out with me make sure you do pop back when i put the finished um, painting on and remember thumbs up subscribe and share my channel comments are always welcome and help me get my art out there so thank you so much for hanging out with me have the most amazing day. Bye.